Today we're talking color separations in Adobe Illustrator. Separations are very important to the screen printing process. Basically it's taking your graphic and breaking it down by color so that you can print it to transparency film. Uh, from which you can then burn your screens. And I'm gonna go over the basics of separating artwork into spot colors. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, organizing your file a little bit, cleaning up your artwork, and and then applying a underbase and then a choke. All right, so this is the graphic we're working with today. Uh, it's a graphic that I created in Adobe Illustrator. Um, it's a four color graphic, and as you can see, it's not the cleanest graphic. Uh, we've got different shapes going all over the place. You know, some of this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, uh, but I kind of created it this way on purpose uh, because I wanted to show you how to clean up artwork like this. Uh, you, you might get artwork like this from a client. Uh, it's really easy to clean up, so I'll show you how to do that. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new artboard. Uh, Shift O is the fastest way to do that. Uh, just drag open an artboard and I'm gonna size it to 13 by 19, which is uh, like the size of the transparency that we'll print on. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, select my artwork here and then Alt drag over here to make a copy. And I like to stay organized, so uh, let's make a separate layer here uh, and just call it uh, Seps and I'm gonna drag this up to that layer. So then I have my original artwork over here and then I have my separations artwork over here. If we go into outline mode, you can see how messy this is. Uh, we've got lines all over the place. We've got shapes overlapping. Uh, it's not very clean. We wanna clean this up. The way I'm gonna do that is to select everything on the artboard and go up here to my Pathfinder window and hit Merge. And as you can see now in outline mode, everything looks a lot cleaner, a lot smoother, nice clean lines, uh, none of that nonsense going on anymore. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, group all of this together, and then I'm gonna work inside the group so that if I'm using like the magic wand tool to select colors, I'm not accidentally grabbing colors over here. Um, so I'm just gonna select that, Control G or Command G to group it together, and then double click inside of here, and now I'm inside this group. And what I like to do when I'm uh, separating is use the magic wand tool and uh, group colors together that way. So I'll uh, hit Y to grab the magic wand tool, and I will select this lighter gold, and uh, that's our 142 here, and then I'm gonna hit G to group that together. So you can see here, now all of those are grouped. Uh, I'm gonna hide that real quick and move on to my next gold, this uh, medium gold here. I'm gonna group those together and I'm gonna hide that. And then this darker gold, I'm going to group those, hide those, and then this brown here, I'll group that and hide that. So now there's nothing left on the artboard, everything's been grouped together. And you can see here, We've got our separate groups. So now I'm gonna go back outside of the group and then I'm going to ungroup the group of colors, if that makes any sense. Hopefully, hopefully this is making a little bit of sense. All of my individual colors are still grouped together. They're just not all in one group anymore. What I haven't done yet is create some registration marks and we're gonna need those on a multicolor job like this uh, so we can get it all lined up. It's pretty easy. You're just using simple shapes. I like to use the rectangle tool. Um, give that a uh, stroke instead of a fill. Uh, maybe we'll make that two points. And then I'm just gonna grab my pen tool and make a couple of lines. Turn that. And then we're gonna center that together. And then we're gonna group it. All right, and that's a pretty basic uh, registration mark right there. We're just going to align that to the center of the artboard and align it to the top. And then I'm going to make a couple of copies of those. So I'll copy, paste in front, bring one down all the way down here. And then I'll make another one, bring it to the side, copy, paste in front, 
bring it over here. And that's usually all I do as far as registration marks. I know some people like to have like three up top, three on the bottom. I found that just having like a triangle thing going on here with uh, two on top and one on the bottom, that's really all I need to get things aligned. And if you want, you can create a little guide here to make sure that uh, your artwork is all aligned. We can see here that it is aligned to the center mark here. Next, I'm gonna do an underbase. An underbase is like a layer of white that you're gonna put underneath your colors uh, so that the colors on top will really um, be vibrant and pop, especially on a dark garment. To make an underbase, uh, first thing I'll do is uh, create a new layer, and then I'm gonna bring it below the set layer here and uh, call it underbase. And uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, select my artwork from the uh, separations layer, copy it, paste it in front, and then I'm gonna drag it down to the underbase layer. All right, so now we've got our artwork on top and we've got our artwork down below. All right, so now I'm going to take that artwork in the uh, underbase layer and unite it. Uh, so it's just one shape. Uh, we're gonna go up to our Pathfinder window again and we're gonna hit unite and that makes it all into one shape. And uh, then I'm just gonna recolor it. I'm just making it pink so that I can actually see it on the artboard here. Uh, I mean, it's not gonna print pink, obviously. I just wanna be able to see it. All right, so the only thing we need to do now is add a choke. And a choke is really just a way for you to um, just contract the underbase a little bit, just in case there's any kind of registration issues. You don't have any white poking out on the sides of your artwork. And there's actually a couple ways you can go about creating a choke, and I'm gonna show you both ways. The first way, um, you're gonna go to your appearance panel, and you're gonna select your fill, and then you're going to go to FX, Path, Offset Path. And offset path is a way for you to either expand or contract uh, the fill. And uh, for our purposes, we're doing a choke, so we're gonna contract it a little bit uh, by hitting negative uh, 0.25 points. Uh, that's kind of the general rule of thumb, at least for me, is for an underbase, is uh, contracting it uh, a quarter of a point, basically. And so if we zoom in here, you can see um, what that choke looks like when we compare it to the artwork on top. I can unhide that, and you can see right there, it, uh, it overlaps it a little bit. See, there's that little bit of space here. And then the other way of creating a choke, and the way that I find myself doing it more often, is um, selecting your underbase, and then adding a garment color stroke to it. And then when you go to print your uh, film, uh, you're going to uncheck that garment color from the uh, the color list, and so it's going to take out that stroke, essentially creating the choke. All right, so we select our underbase here. I'm going to add a stroke, and our, our garment color is this royal blue. And then um, you can add a 0.5 uh, center aligned, or maybe 0.25 aligned to the inside, it's basically the same thing. And so if we zoom into that, you can see this is how much of the underbase we're contracting. And remember, this only works when we are unchecking the garment color from our color list when we go to uh, print our film. And so now comes another important step. Um, we need to be able to make sure these colors on top of the underbase are actually printing on top of an underbase. To do that, you just uh, select your colors and then you go to your attributes panel and then you select overprint fill on any color that you want printing on top of another color. So then we're gonna select our medium gold here and hit overprint fill, our dark gold, overprint fill. And then we have our brown here. I haven't really talked about this yet, but for darker colors, you don't really need to print an underbase underneath um, for like this dark brown or like a black. It's really up to you, your personal preference, if you want to underbase a dark color like that. I don't think it's totally necessary, uh, so I'm going to leave uh, this brown unchecked. And essentially what that's going to do is knock out this portion of the underbase underneath. Uh, all the other parts of the underbase will stay intact because we have overprint fill checked. Uh, but because we are unchecking this, uh, this part of the underbase uh, will not be printed. All right, so that's 
basically it as far as spot color separations go. The only other thing we really need to do now is print it to film. All right, let's talk about RIP software for a little bit. Ideally, you have uh, something called RIP software uh, that works with Illustrator uh, that allows you to print basically straight from Illustrator and it, it'll help you break down your, your half tones and your gradients and stuff like that. But if you're like me, you don't have RIP software. Uh, and so you need to find an alternative way to print your transparencies. The way I get around that is basically by exporting my colors as a PDF. Uh, using something called QPDF Writer, uh, and then I bring those into Photoshop to uh, print from Photoshop. All right, so to do that, I uh, hit Control P to bring up the print screen here. Um, my printer, I'm going to set to QPDF Writer. I'll leave a link in the description below for QPDF Writer. Uh, it's free, doesn't cost anything. All you got to do is download it, install it, and then you can do exactly what I'm doing here. So you set your printer to QPDF Writer. The PPD will be default QPDF Writer. Then you're going to go to Output and you're going to select your mode. It's going to be Separations. Uh, all of this you can just leave the way it is. Uh, and then you get to your color list. Up top you have your CMYK colors. Those should all be unchecked already because you shouldn't have process colors in there. You should only have spot colors. We got our various golds, our dark brown, our garment color, and our underbase white. Now, if you remember, the way we're creating a choke is by adding a garment color stroke and unchecking that in this box here. So this royal garment color here, we're just gonna uncheck it. All right, so now this looks good to me. Uh, we just hit print and then it'll work its magic a little bit and then it'll come back and ask us how to save the PDF. I'll just call it dog, save it into my folder, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to that PDF and open it with Photoshop. And so when you open it in Photoshop, you'll see here it gives you each page uh, separately. We have five colors, so we have five pages. I'm going to shift select all those. So I've got all the pages selected. I'm going to go over here and make sure it's cropped to media box. I'm going to leave anti-aliased unchecked. Uh, all these settings look good to me. 13 by 19 resolution 600. This all looks good to me. So I'm going to hit OK. And then it's going to open each one of those pages separately. Uh, right here we've got our, our medium gold. Uh, we've got our highlight gold. We've got our dark gold. This looks like our dark brown. And this is the underbase. And as you can see here, it has taken out the sections of the underbase where there is a dark brown. And that's basically it. From here, we can just print it to our transparency film. You're going to want to make sure that your printer settings are, are the highest they can be. Make sure those blacks are really dark, really opaque. Uh, and then you can move on to burning screens. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. I know some of you have been commenting lately about questions related to separations or questions related to Illustrator. Um, if you've got any more questions, make sure you let me know in the comments below. If you've got any tips for me, maybe you know how to do this a little bit better. I'm all ears. You know, I'm always looking for new ways uh, to help streamline the process. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.